Hello everybody and welcome back to Unicorn Horns, a discussion series about Chinese science fiction. Today we will be discussing The Mirror Image of Earth, written by Zheng Wenguang and translated by Sun Liang. You can find this story published in two places. One is the Penguin World Omnibus of Science Fiction. The other is called Science Fiction from China. So scholars often point to three golden ages of science fiction from China. The first is around the turn of the century, the second is the 1980s, and the third is today's golden age of science fiction, which starts around the 1990s and goes into today. So far in this channel we have only looked at authors that come from this last section, this last period from the 90s to today. But today we will look at another era, the 1980s. Actually, born in 1929, Zheng Wenguang started publishing science fiction in the 1950s, and arguably he is most known for the work that he has done in this period. Zheng Wenguang studied astronomy at Sun Yat-sen University until 1949, and then he began writing uh, science popularization essays for a magazine or journal called popular science. This was the 1950s, and Joan was influenced by a lot of Soviet science fiction authors at the time. This includes authors like Alexander Believ, and Joan read these authors in the original Russian. Eventually reading these Soviet authors' science fiction influenced Joan to write his own science fiction in order to educate his readership. Joan published his first short story in 1954. The short story was entitled From Earth to Mars, and it was about two siblings who traveled in a rocket ship to Mars. Professor Hua Li, in her book entitled Chinese Science Fiction During the Post-Mao Cultural Thaw, has a chapter about Zheng Wenguang and writes that Zheng, at the end of this short story, made sure to make a note to let the audience know that this was a fictional tale and that the purpose of this short story was to encourage young people to explore science and the world on their own. In this way, Zheng saved himself from being accused of writing far-fetched uh, genre tales, which is something that happened to a lot of people in this early Maoist period in the 1950s in China. Zheng's focus on science education allowed him to continue writing and publishing science fiction all through this increasingly restrictive period uh, of the 1950s in China. Zheng's ability to write and publish science fiction all through the 1950s all the way into the 1980s contributed to this idea of him being the father of Chinese science fiction. Today's story, as we mentioned, however, does not come from Zheng's work in the 1950s, but comes from uh, the 1980s. It's a short story that reflects not only the changes happening in science fiction in the 1980s, but also in the broader literary scene in China. The mirror image of Earth begins with the discovery of a new planet called Euclid, just the Chinese word for Earth spelled backwards. The planet is studied from a distance for a long period until some astronauts and explorers decide to venture onto the planet. After spending some time on this new planet, the astronauts discover that it's just a color complement replica of Earth where all of the seas are the color yellow and the grasses the color pink. They also discover that there are no living things on the planet. After exploring for some time, the astronauts discover a cave, and inside the cave they accidentally trigger a holographic movie. The movie begins to play these various scenes from Chinese history, showing scenes of the Ming sailor uh, Zheng He, as well as uh, the burning of Afang Palace at the end of the Qin Dynasty. The final scene that is shown to them is of one of the astronaut's brother, a teenage Red Guard who was killed in a fight during the Cultural Revolution. After watching these scenes play out, the astronauts are curious as to why they're being shown all these violent images from their history. They discover that it's the aliens of this new world showing them their own violent past. But these aliens never reveal themselves. In fact, all they see of the aliens at the very end of the story is the alien spaceship flying off into the distance 
too afraid to meet the humans because of their violent past. As this part of the story plays through, the narrator steps into the story to speak to the reader directly. It was incredible that they should see on this strange planet the picture of that foolish, brutal conflict in the 20th century, says the narrator at one point. And near the end of the story, the narrator comes in again to say, in studying our own history, can we be as unbiased, level-headed, and impartial as the cosmic beings? Is it true that we've tried to embellish and modify history at will, consciously or unconsciously? On the other hand, when we see historical scenes shot by others, we feel very awkward, as though we were viewing our own naked bodies pitted all over with ugly scars. In this story, Zhang Wenguang includes elements from his earlier science fiction stories with some elements of the broader trend in literature of the 1980s in, in China. Some of the story involves complex scientific explanation, but some of it involves reflections of the past. This situates the story as a part of the broader movement of scar literature happening in Chinese literature in the 1980s. Scar literature was a genre in which Chinese authors reflected upon the Cultural Revolution and its impact on the country and its people. Rather than looking towards the future in this story, like he had in many of his previous stories, Zheng uses this story to instead look to the past. Exploring a new world, the astronauts stumble upon their own history. In this way, Zheng forms a bridge between his previous socialist-style science fiction about science education and nation-building to a more reflective style of science fiction that started happening in the 1980s in China. So who are the aliens meant to represent in this story? One way to read this story is they are meant to be mere images of the astronauts themselves. The story points to the broader feeling about being alienated from one's own traumatic history, remembering your own history as if you are watching these events happen to somebody else. This can especially happen when the narrative of history keeps changing or being changed by people around you. I also think this short story is worth looking at because it's reminiscent of some aspects of the three-body problem. Readers of that series may recognize this idea of sharing images of humans' violent past with uh, extraterrestrial people. I don't think Liu Cixin has ever directly commented upon this uh, connection, uh, and if you've heard otherwise, please feel free to let me know. But I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that he has had a lot of influence on this period of the contemporary golden age of science fiction from China. I think I will leave the commentary uh, about this story there for today. Uh, if you have any other thoughts, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will also put some more information about Zheng Wenguang and about the broader genre of scar literature in the description below. Thank you for watching to the end. Bye-bye.